right. Let's talk about Night Rage, your band for more than 20 years already. Amazing how times how time flies. You know, uh, tell me about the beginnings of, of the band. How did you put together a super group uh, with Thomas Lindbergh on as a, as a vocalist, you know, the legendary voice from At The Gates, uh, Gus G from Firewind and later Ozzy Osbourne, uh, guitar player, and also Per Muller Jensen, the drummer from The Haunted. Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess it was my, you know, willing to play the music because uh, before Night Rings, exactly before I had another band called Exhumation, a Greek death metal band, melodic death metal band, and we did three albums. Uh, we recorded and released the uh, three albums. All of them recorded actually in Sweden. Uh, first album with Dan Swan or in the two uh, next albums with uh, Frederick Nordstrom. And uh, when that band split up, I felt very disappointed and all that stuff. So Nitrous was my outlet, you know, to continue playing the music. And I wanted to, to go a little bit further. So I decided to uh, move permanently from Greece, uh, where I was uh, living at the time, and uh, move permanently in uh, Gothenburg, Sweden, to continue my, you know, uh, musical, you know, adventure, let's say, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to continue playing the music so my it was actually my wailing and my uh you know strong strong uh passion that i had to play metal music and uh, you know uh creating my own songs and i don't know it was uh because you asked me about how i found these guys it was meant to be i mean uh actually i found thomas Lindbergh by luck on uh, by accident on the on the street while, while i was working on the street in gothenburg i found thomas and uh which, uh, which I knew a little bit from the exclamation days. And I told him about nitrates and all that stuff. And of course I knew Frederick because we recorded two albums with exclamation there and he helped me a lot, you know, a uh, huge thanks to Frederick Nordstrom that let me actually record the album for free without uh, having to pay any money. And then he uh, also helped us to find a record label in uh, Central Media, uh, wanted to, uh, you know, actually sign the band. and. All the other guys, I don't know. It was we were there, you know, when we were recording the the album. Uh, the Haunted uh, also recorded another album at the same time. So uh, actually, I was alone to be honest with you. So I needed to, that was the only way for me to start the band. So I needed uh, some people to play the drums or you know all that stuff. So it's uh, it was it was meant to be, and uh, you know I don't I don't want to say it was pure luck, but it was my uh, you know, extreme determination to keep it up and, you know, make, record that album was, was my uh, lifetime goal, you know, after I left Greece. Can you tell me more about that uh, experience with Thomas Limber when you ran into him in the street? That sounds very out there. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like, I mean, yeah, but it's, it's, it's exactly what happened. I mean, yeah, I, I met uh, Thomas uh, while I was working in the streets of Gothenburg. I met him and I say hello and um, I told him about nitrates. I explained to him. He was really actually uh, shocked that I was there. Like he asked me, what are you doing here? Blah, blah, blah. All that stuff. I explained to him that uh, I wanted to, you know, I, I moved here just to continue with my, uh, you know, uh, uh, musical dreams. And I, I wanted to record an album. So he got re really interested and I gave him the demo that I had in my hands at the time. So I, uh, I think he liked he liked actually a lot the songs and the lyrics that I was writing, so he he eventually wanted to you know to sing the songs and he really liked the songs we had and the and he sensed a strong passion and strong you know very pure it was very pure for him that the fact that I did all this for uh, for the music so I think he. He was, uh, in a way, he was uh, blown away by that, only by that, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. And Michael Stein, you know, the Dark Tranquility singer, was a guest on the second album on the song Frozen, right? Uh, what do you remember about the experience of working with him? Of course, Dark, Dark Tranquility was uh, one of the leaders in the melodic death metal scene for us. Uh, I used to love a lot uh, their older albums, like The Gallery, you know, one of my favorite Dark Tranquility albums. And for me, Michael, along with Thomas, was one of, 
one of the best uh, singers. So for us, was an, uh, again, once again, it was an honor to have him uh, being on the album and as a guest. And uh, he also liked the music a lot and our, our you know, willing and our passion and all that stuff. So he was, uh, I guess, meant to be. Also, I think our record, record label helped a little bit on that. Central Media was suggesting to add someone else for that uh, song because we needed some type of uh, a little bit more clean, cleaner vocals. So that's uh, that's that's what happened there. You know, in in a way, you are kind of like a a Monty Connor from Greece because you get the chance to get all these super metal stars from Europe. You know, from the Haunted at the Gates, Dark Tranquility, and maybe you can say also that you kind of discover Gus G because he was really, really young when and he, you and you and him started in Night Rage. Yeah, actually, like, Gus well, used to be a fan of my old band, Exclamation. Mm -hmm. So we, we were living in the same neighborhood. So he was a fan and he really admired, he really liked Exclamation. So that's how we uh, end up being really good friends. And uh, the start of Night Rage is uh, me and Gus, of course, we wrote the songs and all that stuff. We sent the demo to Frederick. And uh, he was very talented, you know, very passionate, and we were in the same page. And I helped him a lot, you know. I, I took he, I took uh, him with me in Sweden, so I, I gave I opened a lot of doors for the guys, and he I, I'm I'm sure he really appreciated that. So I don't know. I have maybe a good uh, a good uh, ear or a good uh, will to help people, and that's something that I um, I will never change. So. Whenever someone is uh, asking me for help or anything like that, I will always give back. It's not that I only want to take or, you know, I guess I, I consider myself more, uh, most like a giver. I like, like to give and help people to make the next move, you know. That makes me happy, actually. And how was your reaction when you found out that Gus G uh, became the lead guitar player for Ozzy Osbourne? Uh, I wasn't surprised uh, because of, 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 I, I, the guy has uh, is very talented, of course, and I think it was only a matter of time be before the big guys, you know, um, hear him play or see his huge passion for music. So it's a, it's a, a very good thing. And I was uh, when he actually I was the first guy he, that he actually called me when he got this message from the management of Ozzy Osbourne, and I explained to him right there that I, I was sure that you you will get the job because they're looking for people like you, you know, so, and that, that's exactly what happened afterwards. So you and Gus remain very close friends. Yes, yes, all these years. So yeah, we are friends, of course. Awesome. And um, let's talk about the Night Rage sound because to me it's very particular. You know, of course it's a melodic death metal band but it doesn't sound like an old school melodic death metal band per se. Uh, but at the same time, it doesn't sound like In Flames or even Soil Work, you know, the most uh, modern melodic death metal bands out there, let's say. So um, what are the influences of Night Rage since, since day one, pretty much, because all the albums are really good? I think it's uh, a combination of different uh, the styles, like because I used to, because I'm, uh, you know, I, I grew up listening to uh, 80s metal, Maiden and Metallica and all these bands, Merciful Fate and Def Leppard, Ozzy Osbourne, uh, the, for, of course. And uh, um, later, the, death metal, the, the melodic death metal uh, thing came for me and uh, Bay Area thrash metal and uh, Florida death metal, actually. I was a, a really big fan of all, all these genres of uh, metal. So I think Nitrates is an amalgam, or a, it's like a combination of all these different styles, but uh, uh, getting through our, our, our the nitrates filter, you know, we put all these influences and we put them in the nitrates filter, I say. So it's, uh, we want our things to be very heavy and brutal at the same time, uh, being also melodic and very ethereal, you know. So it's a kind of, uh, we try to write good songs. Uh, what I want to say here, that, that's always our motto and our focus is always to write good songs. And uh, that's what we're tr trying to do all the time. All right. 
the third album, New Disease is Boring, uh, which was much more into metalcore, which was huge at the time. Uh, this album was released in 07, right? Uh, in yeah, in retrospective, do you think it was a smart move? Well, I don't think it was it was metalcore because I'm not a fan of metalcore. I don't listen to that type of music at all. Maybe the other guys that I had in the in the band at the time, Jimi and Hendrix, they they were more into that type of music and they wanted to put their own uh, flavor to to our song. But I still think it's a night it's a traditional nitrates album. You know, a new disease was born. Maybe some sometimes here and there there's some uh, influences from on the vocals or but I think it's For me, it's a, it's a very strong Nitrates album, and I don't consider it metalcore at all, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, it, it's still Night Rage. It sounds like Night Rage, but I like the record. Don't, don't get me wrong. I, I love it. But I remember back then, you know, 07, 08, when, when this album was out, uh, I, I read a lot of... Uh, I, I, I don't, I don't want to say negative comments, but uh, some fans were saying like, what happened to Night Rage? This sounds too modern. You know, this sound, this is, this, it's, it seems like they are trying to sound maybe a bit like Chimera, Shadows Fall, Kill Switch Engage, maybe. And some, some fans, uh, you know, true metal fans, <laughs> uh, true old school metal fans were disappointed about that. And I, I, I actually was um, at the other side of, 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 the, of the field. I was like, hey, you know, it's a band, it's music, it's it, people grow, people change, people want to try different things. And that's okay. It's, it's, it's really good. It, 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 it's not a bad thing. So th th that, that was what I, what I tried to meant with my question. But you say that it, it doesn't sound like metalcore at all to you. Not to my ears, and of course, everybody has uh, uh, his own opinion, and I respect every opinion, even if it's uh, negative or uh, positive. I, I understand, and I, and I know that you can't please everybody. So, for me, uh, this album, it's maybe maybe they judge the album because of the sound, because the sound is a little bit different. Because we we left Studio Fredman on this album, and we recorded with Jacob Hansen at uh, in Denmark. And of course, he's a different producer, amazing producer, by the way, Jacob. And he gave us a different sound. Maybe the drums were, were a bit more clicky and more, you know, um, that type of uh, metalcore, that type of metalcore bands using, like right? that type of drum sound. And that gave exactly. the feeling, yeah. that probably that gave the feeling to the people that, uh, yeah, now Nigel's became metalcore. And in reality, I, I never, I never hear metalcore in my life, to be honest. So I don't, <laughs> I don't listen to that. Yeah, it's it's a matter of preference, and I That's understand okay. also that people, they, people in uh, labels and magazines, uh, sometimes they try to put labels in you, like they yeah, try all to, the time. They, they put a category in your music, and they, this time they decided that we are a metalcore band. But uh, I can promise you one thing: that we are not a metalcore band. We are a pure metal band for sure. You know. Uh, talking about the reaction of the fans with this album, uh, was that the, the reason to write a much more raw and intricate as well album like Wearing a Marty, Martyr's Crown? Not really, because uh, when, I'm, when, I'm t when I'm, you know, playing my guitar, I don't really think about these things. I always try, like I said before, maybe sound like a cliche, but it's true. I'm, I'm always trying to write good songs and I don't really pay attention too much to what the people uh, have to say, because it's first and foremost, I need that uh, we need to like what we are doing and we need to be fans of what we are doing. We need to be excited. And uh, when, we, when, we, when I feel that we are pleasing ourselves, that's all I care, you know. Of course, I, I want people to like what we are doing, but I'm not doing this to uh, please everybody, you know. Uh, so no, that not, that wasn't the, the case with uh, the next album. It, it just happened to be like that, you know. Like we, we had a new singer, and uh, we 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 came back to Studio Fredman once again, working with Frederick, and that that's the album we um, we produced. 
the one thing that never changed with nitrogen is the fact that we don't want to go too far right or too far left, if you know what I mean. We just want to be a metal band at all times. Whether that means that uh, we have to play, you know, uh, heavy, heavy songs with brutal riffs, uh, we always want to be a metal band and we're proud of it. You know, we don't want to be something else. So, you know, that's the only, only one thing that never changed with nitrate. Mm -hmm. So it's always like a natural process when you write, when you yes. record. That's the, that's the right word. This, 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 it was very, everything came very naturally. Like, like, uh, like uh, I'm sitting here and I'm playing my guitar, some riffs and the songs came out like that. So it's, it's always like that, you know, it's a matter of inspiration for us you know, in, in the band to try to write songs with great hooks that can touch the listener. And we have some great, uh, really, really nice uh, lyrics along with it, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And since we are talking about the history of Night Rage and all the albums and guests uh, during the whole discography, uh, there were also a lot of lineup changes changes during the last uh, 20 years. Uh, why is that? Yeah, well, it's, uh, it has to do with uh, the, the fact that I was, uh, I was too naive sometimes and getting people in the band I was too excited and uh, believing in everybody that was telling me uh, I want to be in the band, man, you know, stuff like that. So I was, uh, because I'm very, I'm like a child sometimes. I mean, I'm getting very excited when someone tell me, yeah, man, I, I really love nitrates. I believe everybody, but I realized that uh, that was one of the mistakes that I did. Like I needed to be more careful with what kind of people I put in the band. And uh, of course, every every member that uh, was, uh, was in, in the band, they have their own reasons why they left or why they kicked out, you know. But uh, it wasn't because I'm a bad guy or something like that. But it, it was because uh, that was the only way for the band to uh, to go to the next, uh, to make the next uh, move, to, to go to the next level. And uh, of course, I understand all these uh, changes kind of hurt the band a little bit, you know. It's not the best thing in the world, but I'm the, the I want to be honest with you, I'm the last person on the earth in the world that I want that, that to happen. But, well, I can change people when they decided to do things uh, with some other way. The only thing I want is that the, the band needs to, uh, needs to, go, to go on, you know. But, I, I, of course, uh, saying that, I also I want to say that uh, I want to thank everybody that was in the band and in their own way, they helped the band, you know, achieving a lot of goals. So... At the same time, I wanted to thank everybody. That was doesn't matter if they how they left and why they left. the The only positive from all that is the band is still here, and with the lineup we have right now, I feel very happy. You know, I know it's a lot of years past and uh, we had a lot of ups and downs, but you know what can you do if you? That's life. You, <laughs> it's, life sometimes is like that. Has a lot of ups and downs, but. As long as you, you get down, you need to find the power to get to get up and, uh, you know, continue with uh, what you want to do. And for me, this is creativity. I just want to write songs. And and uh, of course, it's uh, having to do with other other four people and uh, having been the same band is not the easiest thing in the world, you know, because everybody has their own dreams and their own, uh, you know, plans. Plus, your current singer has been with the band for the last seven years, actually, right? Yes, and that's kind of an achievement for Nitrates. <laughs> yeah. Because it used to be like a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah. Because Thomas Limber recorded the first two albums, you know, Sweet Vengeance and oh, yes. the, the second one, what's well, the name? Uh, Descended to Chaos. Well, when the band Descent started... Case. When the band started, I was alone, to be honest. I, the first two albums, I was pretty much alone. I was, I had to do it like that, you know. Then on the third album, I actually tried to make a real, a stable lineup, but that does, didn't work. Uh, and then uh, we had to go to the next album. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was always a, a searching for the right guys. Uh, the yeah, one, one, good thing, one good thing is that I stay, I stay in the band from day one until now. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. A yeah, you are like the Dave Mustaine for Night Rage. 
you know, I didn't want to be. I didn't want to be, but sometimes life doesn't give you any other chance, so you have to, you know, yeah. go move on, man. I I totally agree. But plus, the the lineup from wearing a martyr's crown lasted like maybe three albums, you know, with uh, Anthony or two albums with Anthony. All right. Two albums. Yes, two mm -hmm. Then on on the Puritan, uh, Ronnie came and he changed everything. I think Ronnie is a is a brother. You know, he's he's coming from the hardcore scene. You know, he understands a lot. He understands where what uh, what his position in the band. We are kind of uh, you know on the same page. So the lineup we have now, I think I'm very I'm very happy with it. You know, so I really hope this will stay uh, forever. You know, mm -hmm. right. Uh, the latest album, Wolf to Man, sounds a bit like early Night Rage, in my opinion. Uh, where does the inspiration came from? How was the writing process for this uh, record? For Wolf to Man, yeah, me, it's uh, mainly me and Magnus Soderman, the other guitar player, that we're hanging out together and we're writing all the songs together like a team. And uh, for Magnus, that, that was a really great thing too, because He is also a you know a very amazing skillful uh, guitar player and he never had that in any, any band that he played before. He he explained to me that he feels very very good because in the nitrate camp he all his ideas and all his you know uh, riffs and all his songs are getting into the band without any problem because we have good chemistry and I'll, I'm the I'm this kind of guy that I always uh, give a chance to other writers to write with me you know. It's not that it's not like Nitrous is Mario's band, so that probably tells you something. Like I'm more, very open to give the the you know the freedom actually to other uh, players, to other writers to write with me, uh, as long as they have killer ideas. And it happens that we, me and Magnus we have really really good chemistry, and uh, that's how we wrote the album together. And then Ronnie came into the picture, do, did his uh, vocals and his lyrics. Francisco put his uh, The bass uh, lines and all that stuff. So it's it's kind of a it's always a team effort. It's not like Mario's Nitrates band. It's a band. All right. I, that's, that's, I take that's back. The, I take back my comment about Dave Mustaine. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the things that uh, seems kind of strange. Like because you asked me for why you have these lineup changes. Because that makes me look a little bit uh, kind of a, a bad person, which I'm not I'm, really. I'm, Yeah, to I don't know. I mean, I'm 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 not I'm saying about the other people like when oh, they okay. read, probably they will think like, man, Mario's what he the, what the fuck he's doing like. <laughs> it's it's not like that at he's all. He's like a know? tyrant, you know, firing <laughs> everybody all the time. <laughs> Which I'm not actually, and uh, like I like I told you, I always try to help people. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. probably that's my weakness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in this world, you know, being a nice guy like you, it's actually yeah. a weakness. So it's a, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, you always learn, you know, in life. So for me, right. for me, being here now talking to you, and you said before 20 years of nitrates, that sounds kind of out there, like, like it's a, it's a, it's not real. But it, it, yeah. for me, that makes me feel good because we are still here and that shows a lot of, uh, Uh, great passion for music, uh, doing music, you know. My, my yeah. next question is, uh, what's in the horizon for Night Rage? Uh, actually, are you working already on a new album? Well, uh, we have some great news for you, man. We have already recorded the next album. It's already recorded. It's awesome. And we, we, we are waiting now to uh, make the videos, the music videos and uh, the photos for the video. Now we're Our Vagelis uh, Peticas, the guy that he's doing the artwork for us. Uh, I don't want to say more because we haven't uh, officially announced any title or songs. But uh, in in 20, 2021, we're gonna release the new album, and we're very 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 excited. This time, what we've done with me and Magnus and Ronnie and Francisco and Dino, our uh, drummer, is is really really great songs, and I'm can't wait for. All the fans to listen to the new album so uh stay tuned on the, on our facebook page or uh official page about news about the new album we're very very excited with the new songs it's pure night mm -hmm. tell me a bit more about the musical direction of these uh, new songs 
it's it faster, uh, more melodic. It's faster. It's more melodic. It's more uh, mature songwriting this time. It's. Uh, I think we did. Uh, it's like an um, amalgam of all the albums we have done in one. You know, so a lot of melodies, a lot of hooks, a lot of uh, good riffs. We believe it's a great album and we really hope that uh, people will feel the same and uh, everybody that will listen to. So can't wait to uh, go out to, to get it out there for all of you guys, you know. What about guests? Uh, we don't have any guests on the album. We don't want to have uh, guests from now on because we want to be ourselves. Of course, we, we know we can do it by ourselves. Sometimes it's cool to uh, put uh, one guest here or there I think sometimes we overdid the over the guest thing, like on the Insidious album. I remember we have a lot yeah. of guests, so that kind of that kind that it's cool on one hand, but on the other hand, I think it takes away a little bit from the power of the band. So we're trying to you know keep it in the family, you know. Mm -hmm. And who's the producer of this album? It's uh, Frederick Norston. We did uh, the drums, we recorded the drums. We went back to Studio Fredno after uh, many years now. So this is a very great thing. And also Frederick produced and mixed and mastered uh, the album. He, he did a great, really, really great job. Mm -hmm. So I was uh, in Fredman's studio with all the band and we were, were working on uh, on the album. So we have the album ready in our hands. So we can wait just to uh, you know unleash it in the world. <laughs> Do you already have a, a release date? Uh, technically, yes. Uh, around May. Maybe oh, okay. we around May, where our label is uh, Despot Records is uh, planning. But all with all this COVID uh, thing, uh, sometimes you don't know. But uh, we're planning for May yeah. now, so hopefully uh, to release the album. But before that, we're gonna release a, a music video and uh, three, four digital singles, stuff like that. So it's uh, yeah, we we can't wait, man, because. Now I'm listening to the album by myself and, you know, I just want you and everybody else to, to, to take a listen, you know. Great. And uh, do you already have some touring plans for, for this year, 2021? Um, unfortunately, no, because uh, every booker we are talking to, they, are, they have issues with uh, COVID. So nobody knows, actually, if, if it's safe to book a tour right now and, uh, and for when. Uh, a lot of people saying that in 21, there's not going to be any live shows. So the live shows I, I hear uh, from bookers saying things like probably shows will start in the tw in 22 or in, not even that. So it sounds a little bit, uh, you know, uh, not too positive. So we, we don't want to put focus right now on that. Our focus is to put the album out there for everybody to listen and have a good time. We want to put this album out and make everybody feel good. This is our main focus right now. 